Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Focus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have on our line uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, St. Clair Gray III. Uh, he's from Social Circle, Georgia, and he is a person uh, that you should know. Good morning, uh, Reverend Gray. Good morning, Dr. Brooks. How are you doing on this beautiful morning? Right. We're very happy you're taking time from your busy schedule again, and literally your real busy schedule to be with us on Community Focus uh, to bring us up to date on uh, current events and, and, and about what you've been doing since we talked with you uh, the, the last time. Uh, we well, talk thank, ab- you. thank you so much. Yeah, we talked about Social Circle, Georgia. Where is that? Social Circle, Georgia is probably about 45 miles east of Atlanta in okay. a small area, a small county called Walton County. We are pretty much uh, what they've considered the little-known secret of Georgia, uh, depending on how one looks at it. Okay. <laughs> but okay. we are very, it's a very small city. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Population of uh, what? Well, they say, well, according to what they say on the answer machine, they says 5,000. But okay. I, would, okay. some, I, I, would, I would say probably about 4,000, a little bit less. I don't think it's 5,000 people. <laughs> and, and you city. got active, too. You were from what, uh, Baltimore, Maryland? Actually, I was from a place called Hydesville, Maryland, uh, Hydesville and then Mount Rainier, which is pretty much right across the street from Washington, D.C. Oh. Compared that to, compared that to Baltimore, I was about 35 35 miles south of Baltimore, uh, so like I said, I can pretty much walk to D.C. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and we got acquainted through a young lady here. She passed away now uh, That from Wa- exactly. uh, Waukegan, and she had relatives there in Baltimore. And and uh, I-, I think God had his way of putting us together, and we've been together Almost ever definitely. since. Yeah, you know. And Almost you've been definitely. active there, too, because you're on the school board there, right? Yes, yes. I was um, uh, privileged and blessed to be elected uh, to the school board uh, this past no- uh, November, well, last November. And it's, it's, it's been pretty interesting, uh, pretty much getting an uh, understanding that uh, the dynamics coming in this being in a small city and understanding how they do things from a city perspective compared to a county perspective and being the only African-American male voting person on the board um, has a lot of uh, uniqueness, if you want to say, to it being in a very city that's very conservative and really kind of almost, I hate to say it, the good old boy network. Okay. But really trying to come in and trying to make some changes, not just in in the uh, aesthetics of the, of the school system, not just for football skill, not just for plan, you know, pl- planning, planning, but really trying to understand and get into the meat of the, the academics and really teacher development, uh, student preparation, trying to make sure that all students are ready for college, and even and even being in a small area, Doctor Brooks, trying to help people to undo this concept that everyone is not going to college because Mm -hmm. as as you know and i know that is a psychological abuse to put into a kid's mind when they're in elementary school or middle school that not everybody's going to college well what that simply means is that as soon as a child gets a c or doesn't do above and beyond they automatically fall back on what teachers tell them so i'm trying to really undo that psychology among teachers among administrators as well as among parents Okay, but there's nothing wrong uh, with uh, being educated, though, right? Oh, no, nothing wrong at all. I believe everybody ought to be educated, classroom as well as outside the classroom. Um, but we have to stress it and make it as important as possible for all students, and in, and in many cases, especially for uh, people of color, mm-hmm. because, once again, we, we, we're not going to college as much as we should or as often as we should. And secondly... We don't take education as seriously. We're we're so much trying to be, you know, so much behind the totem pole and behind behind the eight ball that we have to see. You no, know, education is important, and we have to demand the best from all of all the parties involved, from from the teachers, from the students, from the parents, and everybody. 
And now when a when a when a student graduates, he's got a mortgage payment to make uh, upon graduation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> especially 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 when they you know, when they go to colleges to the point nowadays that college is becoming so expensive mm-hmm. for a lot of kids and and it's almost a deterrent because you're asking these kids, I know some of the universities down here, prestigious universities, are asking for forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. And as we all know, there's no guarantee that you're going to have a job lined up when you graduate. That's why not only is education important, but exposure to different to different avenues, exposure to, to different parts of the world. And then we have to teach our kids how to network, not only within one among one another, but also within the community, within businesses, within nonprofits, even within their professors. Because that's how that's how life is. It's all about networking and building relationships. So that's what we have to keep doing and keep stressing. Yes, you, we have a global society, so you are really competing globally. Exactly. You're competing globally almost in everything that we do, um, from fast food to nonprofit to for-profit to academics. Everything is done on a global basis now. And unless we understand that we're dealing with people we're dealing with organizations and institutions from a global perspective. We will always have a narrow mind thinking everything is supposed to be small within a box, but by now it's time for us to think outside of the box and understand what's important and how to tap into that global market so that, one, we can market ourselves effectively, and, two, we can have opportunities not just here in the United States but all over the world so that we can make a greater impact for everybody that we come in contact with. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking with Reverend Dr. Sinclair Gray, that's G-R-E-Y, the third, uh, from Social Circle, Georgia. And uh, we're reminiscing about uh, uh, current events and, and, and also about, uh, um, well, we have a purpose-driven life, uh, Reverend um, uh, Sinclair. Uh, all of us are here for a purpose. God put all of us here for a purpose, right? Exactly, most definitely. And uh, and unless we understand that purpose, then we will always be defined and confined by someone who doesn't care anything about us mm. and will try to use us and abuse us. Uh, we, we I know you and I have talked about it before. All of us have a purpose-driven life. All of us have a purpose in this life. And I want to kind of let the audience know that one of the things that we have to do, we have to get outside of, and I know I'm speaking to a lot of people who go to church. Let's get outside this church box mentality. Okay. And what I mean, what, what I mean by that, Doctor Brooks, is that when you talk to people, especially a lot of people from church, they always say, "Well, my purpose is to praise God. My purpose is to serve the Lord." Well, that's great, but your purpose has to extend beyond that. From the beginning of, of, of biblical antiquity, God put Adam in the garden to work the garden. He gave him a purpose. He didn't mm-hmm. tell. Adam, to, I just want you to sit and sing all day. I want you to sit and pray all day. I want you to work. I'm giving you something to do. All of us have something to do in this world, whether it's preaching, whether it's singing. Whatever job we have, it has to be something that, that, that's purposeful, that gives us meaning, and, and that's something that we can work towards every day to perfect it. So all of us have a purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just to be, it's just not to sit here and go through motion after motion. But at the end of the day, at the end of our life, we have to ask ourselves, did I live my life with a purpose? And he also, uh, uh, from from the rib of Adam, he uh, he made woman, and uh, sh- she has a purpose, too. And uh, I guess the main purpose is to be his help meet, right? Exactly. Well, you know, it, to be to be his help me, uh, and that's just to help Adam and not to go against Adam, but to strengthen Adam. Mm-hmm. But, you know, women have been, uh, unfortunately, been sidelined by people who have preached the Bible incorrectly. I mean, we can even look at uh, what a lot of people talked about, the virtuous woman. The virtuous woman is a very powerful woman, mm-hmm. because when we start breaking down who she is and what she did, she was an entrepreneur, she was an investor, she was a wife. She was a mother. She she was, and I like to use the slang, she was a big ball of shot caller in the community. She just wasn't someone who just sat home 
and made garments and, and did nothing. But this was a woman who understood her purpose. Her purpose was to, to generate wealth, to generate income, to close real estate deals, to make her husband look good, to support her husband, to take care of her kids, to, to discipline her kids. So a lot of people mistakenly, when they look at uh, women, they say, I'm a virtuous woman. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these uh, Christian women, they, they look at the verse, uh, um, Fear, you know, you know what? Be- I believe I'm, I'm, I'm quoting it backwards. You know, beauty and charm are deceptive, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be greatly praised. Well, that's nice, but let's talk about what the woman did on mm-hmm. a daily basis. She not only feared God, but she handled her business. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one so, thing, so- one thing she she should not do is. Uh, uh, become a pastor. Use a uh, pastor of a church. It means you, you, uh, you know, you overseer and you uh, taking the place of the man, right? Yeah, that you know, that's always um, that. That's always a touchy topic, you know, when you're talking about women ministers and women pastors, because um, oftentimes people go back and fall into the um, fall into what Paul said that women should learn in silence. And, you know, and I think we have to look at the whole concept of that. You know, I know we can always have debates on whether women should be in leadership or not. Um, but we have to always understand that God can choose to use anyone he wants. I believe in the Old Testament uh, book of Judges that there was a woman named Deborah who was a judge at that time. Yes. And she, and she, and she was ahead, and she tried to pass on, in, in many cases, want to say uh, leadership, and actually to Brother Barack, but in that case, Barack said, I'm not going to do it unless you leave me. And so she decided to leave herself. So, you know, they're, they're, God can call anybody to be a prophet, a prophetess. God can use anybody to be a minister. And I think what happens is that oftentimes we hold so tight to tradition that we don't understand the content, nor the nor uh, the content in which the Scripture was uh, was, 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 was written. So I believe that God can use anybody to be in leadership. The sad thing about it is that we don't understand proper leadership because we're living in a society now whereby many of our men, especially of our black men, they're becoming extinguished and they're they're being uh, not in, not placed in the homes anymore. They're being locked up. They're mm-hmm. being murdered. So okay. the idea is to kill the man because if you kill the man, then you disrupt the order. And as we know, when you disrupt the order, then chaos can come in. That's not to say that women can't lead and can't <clears throat> do what God called them to do. But whenever you mess up the order, then you allow the enemy to come in. And next thing you know, chaos and disorder happens, not just in families, but in communities, which then translates into the nations nationally as well as internationally. So I hear you right by saying that uh, the order is for a man to be the head, right? Right. The man should be the head. That 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 is Bible. That that's not saying clear. That's Bible. And that scripture and tells can, us I, that uh, it described the pa- <laughs> the pastor should be the what the husband of one wife and this type of thing. Should be the hus- Should be the husband of one wife. Should not be greedy for money. Should not be drunk with wine. Should be able to lead. Should be able to lead his household because if he can't lead his household, how can he lead God's people? Um, one of the things that we all know, a pastor uh, is looked upon as the leader. He is the shepherd of the church. And whenever the pastor slips and falls, there goes there goes everybody else. That's not to say that a pastor is perfect, but a pa- being a pastor is tremendous responsibility. Not only must they study, not only must they preach and lead, but they must have such a command and discipline over their own lives that their life in many cases, is to be modeled, will be modeled after. But I always have to say, Dr. Brooks, is that we don't ever want to elevate a pastor to the level of God okay. at all, uh, <clears throat> because a pastor should never be worshipped. Mm-hmm. But when we look at pastors today, they should be a, represent, a representation of God uh, through, their, through their life, through their teaching, through their preaching, and through their leadership. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. they're saying, I hear from God. <laughs> I, I, I got the vision from God. Now we got to make it plain. Now we got to make it active. Now we got to implement this. So that's that's what the pastors have to do. I need some uh, assistance on this uh, uh, <clears throat> and uh, racism. We have a problem with racism in the country. 
Uh, we 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 never had racism in the uh, foreign uh, countries. It's uh, classism and this type of thing, but it's become racism here. Why do we have racism in this country? Well, I, I believe it all starts with a spirit. It's a spirit of superiority over inferiority. Mm-hmm. It's a spirit of a group of people thinking that they're better than somebody else. It's, mm-hmm. it's all about domination. It's all about trying to intimidate people. And when we even think about it, there has to be something you know, within us as, as black Americans that people can't, that people dislike, that people want to rob us uh, rob us from. So racism is, is something that has been around for a long time. And I, I'm hoping that it will it will disappear. But as long as we have politicians, as long as we have people spewing hatred, uh, trying to spew indirect uh, psychological words, we will always have racism. We will always uh, have people who think that they're better than us, one, because they live they live in a certain neighborhood. Uh, they think that because they went to a better school, mm-hmm. they think because of the socioeconomics, because of who their daddy was or their grandparents were, they think they're better than us. So, unfortunately, it's taught. And whenever it's taught, people will continue to live this lie, make comments. And, you know, we've heard so many times, make inappropriate comments, get caught, get busted, I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a racist. Well, mm-hmm. or or here's my favorite, um, I misspoke, or someone didn't understand my words correctly. Well, no, that's what you meant. You mm-hmm. just got caught. Mm-hmm. And, and for some reason, they don't catch their words when they're speaking it. They they all of a sudden now want to apologize after they get caught. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I <laughs> was wondering, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated that the most what you said, the most racist hour in the week is Sunday on Sunday morning? Right, the most segregated, most segregated time is Sunday morning. Um, and, you know, and, and in many cases it is. But, you know, I always, I'm very curious when I, when I hear that from a lot of people because I, I hear more blacks saying that they're white. And I'm saying to myself, why do we have to integrate with them? Why can't they come and integrate with us? But okay. here's the flip side. Once again, I have to know what type of God you're serving. Are you serving a God that makes me passive and always living the suffering life? Or are we worshiping and serving a God that mm-hmm. empowers me, makes me feel important in the skin that I'm in? Uh, classic example, down here in social circle, I'm, a, I'm an associate assistant pastor. And I want to say about a year or so ago, we had a program uh, for a month, and we invited neighboring white churches to come and to preach and to fellowship with us. Well, only one church came. Oh. All the other churches, they didn't show up. Okay. Uh, they, they gave some excuse. And I'm saying to myself, you know what, I don't want to call it racist, but that is a problem when by, whereby we let you know months in advance. And you can't show up, not just the pastor, but you mean to tell me you couldn't send an assistant minister, an associate minister to come and preach the word? You couldn't send, some, you couldn't send members of your congregation to come and fellowship with us? But yet we hear all of this, oh, we're brothers and sisters. Well, that's incorrect. We're all not brothers and sisters in many people's eyes, because if you're not dealing with my issues, if you're not making me feel important, if you just want me to bow down and not speak truth to power, then are we really brothers and sisters in God's sight? Because remember, Dr. King was a preacher, but Bull Connor was also a Sunday school teacher. Two different lifestyles claiming to serve the same type of God. Well, that's wrong. That's a different type of ideology. And, you know, I tell people over and over again, we have got to stop apologizing for serving a God that does not want us to always be suffering, but wants us to be united and to fight for our rights and to be strong as individuals, whether we're white, black. So this whole concept, yes, is segregated on Sundays. I wish it wouldn't be, but there's some fundamental differences in the teaching fundamental differences in belief system, and fundamental differences in, in, in how we live day by day on are we going to um, love one another. Um, you know, not to go off on a tangent, Dr., but I think I sent you something. We have a lot of evangelical Christians who always talk about let's love God. Let, you know, they, they talk about life, and I'm not going to talk about, they talk about, you know, their, their, their pro-life. Okay, well, if you're pro-life, 
your pro-life in the womb, but outside the womb, all of a sudden you forget about that pro-life stance. Okay. We talk about uh, we talk <clears throat> about love, but for all of a sudden we forget about loving our neighbors. We forget about loving those that don't look like us, that don't speak our language. It's amazing how these, a lot of these same white evangelical Christians talk about love. We must love our neighbor, but all of a sudden can't love the Muslim, can't love the Hindu, can't love the people who supposedly have a different faith, different belief, and practice like we have. That's a strong issue I have with them. Reverend Gray, we had uh, World Communion Day uh, at one of the churches in the area this last Sunday, and only one white minister was there in the pulpit, one white minister, and he didn't even bring his congregation. This is World Communion Day, uh, a communion wow. that's ordained by God. You know, marriage exactly. and communion ordained by God. So, you know, on, on your epitaph, uh, on the grave site, you'll see date of birth, date of death, uh, date of birth dash, date of death. And it's only what you do between that dash what counts with God, right? Most definitely, most definitely, because that dash, in many cases, is called the sum total of your life. So what did you do with your life mm-hmm. while you were here from the time uh, you came out your mother's womb until the time that you closed your eyes uh, for your final rest here on earth. What did you do? And if you're going to say, "Well, I love God to a certain to a certain extent," uh, to a certain extent, I love people that only look like me. And you know, just hearing what you're saying about World Communion Day, one white minister, nobody from his congregation, that's that that's troubling. That that's sad. But yet, you want peace in the world. Right. How can we have peace in the world? <laughs> How, you know, how can we have peace in the world whereby people are not willing to put aside their differences? Just because we're different doesn't mean that I have to dislike you. I can respect you and disagree with you. Say, hey, no problem. We disagree. That's fine. Um, but I still love you. Because mm-hmm. in essence, we all have one commonality. We all came from a mother's womb. Mm-hmm. That's the one commonality. We were all created by God that came out of a mother's womb. That's our commonality. And, and we don't know we don't know how long we're going to be on this earth though because on yesterday I was supposed to have a um, a, a guest on my show um, uh, and uh, she called me the night before and said she couldn't appear because one of her uh, employees only about oh. thirty years old had three kids three three youngsters and she's working two jobs. And she got killed in an automobile accident uh, about 1.30 in the morning. And uh, 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 she was probably went to sleep at the wheel trying to go from job to job, you know, to take care of her three kids. Now, so mm. we don't know how long we're going to be here, you know. Um, we really don't. So, you know, uh, God puts us here and and uh, to serve him. And uh, I... I, I she she said that when she gets to heaven, she's gonna ask God why did He take her away. But mm. but that's how strongly she she felt, you know. That why did it have to happen to her? She's struggling, uh, single, three kids, and uh, uh, two jobs, you know, to trying to wow. trying to make it, you know. So yeah, that that that's sad. Uh, uh, you know, we <laughs> I don't know. Um, we have to continue to pray, and you mentioned about we pray especially for the black men, right? And we got so many black exactly. men that are, that have been killed just for no reason. Has had hands up and walking uh, backwards uh, and still getting shot several times. Exactly. What is yeah, the we, problem? We, we, we have to. Uh, we we have to pray, and I think uh, if we're looking from a spirit, you know, from a spiritual sense, it's a spirit. Uh, it's a spirit that's trying to kill the black man, kill the black man. Because mm-hmm. if we look at time and time again, you know, from from before slavery, the power of the black man, and even during the time of slavery, why they wanted to kill the black man, yeah. why they wanted to uh, dehumanize us and demonize us, because there's something in a black man that exudes strength and power. And one thing, one of the things that the oppressor, the enemy, wants to do is try to break the black man because they realize if they break us, the black man, the black men in general, then they can get to our families, they can get into our homes, they can get into our communities. There's something that is in us 
a, a DNA that God has placed in every black man that brings forth strength and power. And when we walk and talk and we become educated, just our existence is a threat to anyone that sees us as a threat. So that's what they wanted. They didn't want to kill us because if you kill the black man, you kill the head, mm -hmm. there goes the body. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we have to do, we have to constantly um, empower and encourage one another and realize that we have this power that we, if we come together, if we understand the power individually and collectively, then we can make a difference in this world. But we have, but we have to understand that's a spiritual attack that's trying to kill us and take us out. Reverend Gray, look out for the black women, too. Look at Serena Williams uh, the, uh, and, and look at the gym, gymnasts, you know, that uh, was a, that the greatest gymnast uh, in the world. You know, said all kind of records. L look at uh, LeBron James. Well, I, I said women, no, but but look at there are many Williams. Uh, um, oh, I saw in the you know on the email that a black female, twenty three years old, that's uh, the the uh, the youngest African American doctor that's uh, yes, ever been. You yes. saw that twenty three years old. You know, so exactly. There, there, there's something in our DNA that people try to break but they can't break because we still keep coming back. We still That's keep ordained, back. ordained by God. Exactly. Yeah. It, has, it has to be ordained by God because we, 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 we've we been through slavery. We, we constantly have suffered. I mean, when we stop to think about it, when politicians try to dismantle and infringe upon voting rights, it has to do with blacks and minorities, but primarily blacks. So there's something in us that is powerful, you know, Black man, black woman, that's powerful. Serena Williams, powerful. Venus Williams, powerful. The 23-year-old doctor, powerful. All the sheroes that have made a difference and constantly making a difference. We saw the sister in the Olympics, I believe, um, Sister Simone, was yes. just doing yeah. it, blowing everybody's mind. Saying, wow, who is this? <laughs> and, 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 then, and, then his, and then the sad thing about it is then, you know, Gabby Douglas, who we loved four years ago, but now people are more concerned about her hair than they are about her talent. Right. Which right. simply means they're falling into the trap of what many of the oppressors want to do. Forget the talent. Forget that she's there. Forget that she's beaten so many people. Forget that she was the champion that we loved four years ago that we're going to be so concerned about her hair. Forget her hair. Worry about her talent. And so also, that, that's what I love. <laughs> African American contributions that have been made, uh, they taking those away and put uh, their names on the contributions, you know, and exactly. African Americans. It, it, I want you to, it, it. Uh, an, another show we're going to do is about the Israelites. Uh, okay. Uh, the Israelites were dark skin people, right? Most I, I want Most you to definitely. trace. They were, they were not blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> okay. I want you to, we're going to trace that next time. You know, there's so okay. much we can talk about. And uh, like I said, you one of the mainstays, uh, uh, on, on the program. I have another one well, that's you. called Willie Brooks in this area that uh, he's on quite quite a bit, uh, a lot to talk All about. Right. And also uh, I have a reverend from Haiti. You know, he was he stepped off the plane and, and uh, a few seconds later there's an earthquake and he's been going oh back to God. Haiti and, uh, and helping out there. He's on a program okay. on a regular basis. So we try to have educational uh, sessions on here to educate the people in Lake County. Lake County is approximately 750,000 people, but, you know, you could stream and get this program on uh, xlc.com, and at 5 o'clock every Sunday morning, uh, and you could get it. Uh, so it's just, you can get it, and you get it live at that time. xlc.com, 5 a.m., Sunday morning. Thank you, Reverend uh, Gray. And, and, Thank you so much, Dr. Brooks. And we're going to be talking with you soon. Tell uh, uh, yes. Ms. Hudson I said hello. She was, uh, did a great I job sure as will. a guest on a program recently. This has Thank been you so much, yeah. yeah, this has been Community Focus. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host.